us to come one more time just to share with you just to uh, be on this platform we are excited because what god because of what god is doing and we are getting praise reports people oh, are texting they're commenting yes. lives are being blessed they're being changed and i thank god because the gospel is going out yes and we thank god for that we give a great shout out this morning to florida down there in the Hope Sound and the Southern Florida, we just thank God for you and and there's Praise some God. people that we have uh, we, uh, one person have accepted Christ Praise that God. we know Praise of God. that we know that of. We so know we thank of. God and you are liking and and sharing our videos and we want you to keep doing that. We don't know how long uh, this pandemic will be, but if you like this, we might stay here a minute. I think we are. Gonna stay I think here. we are to park right I believe here. That this is a part of what God is trying to get out yes. of the church. He has got us out of the church. Yes. Now he's getting out of us what he has designed Indeed. for us to do. And that's to go into the world and preach the gospel. And I'm excited. Oh, yes. I, I'm not looking for things to be like they were when oh. this is all over. I don't want them to that's be right. as usual. I thank God our gospel is, his gospel is reaching people that we would yes. never reach inside of four walls. So uh, Bishop, I'm excited. I'm I, excited. Uh, Pastor, I share your sentiment and we're just excited what the Lord is doing because we see the work of God in this. We also just want to acknowledge that what we did not publicly share with you is that just like many churches throughout the nation, we too have experienced some deaths and there are some very good people that have gone on to be with the Lord. Yes. And it's been hard for us because hard. people, they see the program, but they don't see the, the, the tears before the program the and, and yes. the moments we had to stop and pause because we're just reflecting. And, and these are people so close to us. But we just thank God that they knew the Lord. Praise God. And that's the they main thing that when we know the Lord and have given our life to Jesus Christ, it's not about how we leave this world. It's that we are ready when we have to to leave this world. Absolutely. So we honor the Lord and, and, and we'll talk more about that at a later date on, yes. a, on a different issue. But continue to keep us in prayer. A few things we want to remind you of and that is join us each day at 12 noon for pause and pray. Each day at 12 noon. Pastor, we're having church in our home. Yes, we are. Doing yes, pause we are. and pray. And we really are. The Lord is moving out. Our granddaughter's praying with yes. us and not just, you know, there. That's right. But sometimes she's leading the prayer. Sometimes she's closing the prayer. So Amen. when you make it a family event, uh, we, we're seeing in our churches yes, the are. spirituality Absolutely. of our young Absolutely. people, our young adults, uh, really getting closer to God. Because now we're not caught up in the trappings of the church building, the church service. And, and that's even with what we're doing. We try to be who we are. Absolutely. So we know there are times you laugh with us and and, and, and you are to see the outtakes and, and the Blue bloopers. You know, the you know, you're going to have There's to pay, pay me for that one. Amen. But we just really praise God Amen. for this opportunity. But every day at 12 noon, we're asking everyone, everyone that's a part of our churches, the Holy Temple Church, the uh, Perfecting Life Center, and our Covenant Fellowship uh, Assemblies International, we are praying at 12 noon. And we know some members are working during that time. And, um, but they find a time to get in there Sometimes before that or after that. Yes. But they're making sure they are within that time frame Amen. and and not ignoring God, but acknowledging him. Amen. So we want you to join us every day at 12 noon for pause and pray. Amen. We don't record it, 
because you are going in at your time if you can't pray at 12 and it's your prayer and pastor we have incorporated worship and we're not just oh lord please you to help us god you know one day when i was praying this week i said lord we've already told you every day and lifted up every name. So today yes. in this prayer, I'm just thanking you. Hallelujah. I'm thanking you yes. for what you're already yes. doing. I'm thanking you that you, hallelujah, hallelujah, that you thank hear you us Jesus. when we pray. I am hallelujah. thanking you. And and you know, we were, we came up in Holy Temple together. Yes. And and we came yes. up in some praying times. And I remember when they would tarry and I had to go back to the water fountain just to revive myself. <laughs> because you Thanks know, God. we just went all night and you had to pray so hard. And it was a lot of work. Yes. A lot of work involved. Uh, not faith, work. work and uh, worship. you know, yes. I think the Lord had already saved us and, and all of that, but it was we you didn't have it until someone told you, until people were convinced. Absolutely. And that's how we came up. But I've learned over these years, over many years of growing in Christ, that prayer is not always begging God. Right. It's not always asking God. So there, there, there are days now when I'm doing it, doing pause and pray. And this is a long commercial for pause and pray. But what I'm doing is I, I'm playing worship music. Amen. I'm worshiping Amen. God. I'm singing along the songs. And then we go into prayer and I read a scripture. We yes. started that. You As know that. Say yes. And you we share that so. scripture with yeah, you. Yeah, take the time to read a scripture. Um, I'm up early in the morning before I go to work or even um, as I'm working, I'm in a prayer um, I'm with a prayer line, but also the Lord gives a scripture every morning, so I kind of leave the Bible open if I have to go to work where I pr um, prayed and where I read that morning. But uh, incorporate scripture. Right. Uh, we get answers from God when we re when we repeat His to word. Him His word. His when word. we can recite to Him His word. That's right. When we can remind Him, not that He needs reminding, right. but it lets uh, Him know that we do know His word. Mm -hmm. when, we, when we quote scripture or we say the scripture back to Him, because this is really what He said in the 66 Amen. books. Amen. Our answers are in the word Hallelujah. of God. Amen. So take that time and read scripture. Just don't go in cold in prayer. That's right. Just don't just jump in prayer. Just don't beg God in prayer. But sometimes just spend that time in worship. Just say God, I know you already yes. know. Yes. I know you already know. So I'm going to take this next 30 minutes, this next hour, just to bless your name, just to worship you, oh, yes. just to make you the center of my prayer. Hallelujah. Because when he's the center, then things will get done. Yes. Things will get done when we make him our focus. Yes. So I know you can't wait for tomorrow to, to get, go in prayer at 12 noon. Pause and Amen. pray. The second thing we want to share with you, it's really three things, but the second thing we want to share with you is that if you're blessed by uh, uh, Sunday Praise. Now, some of you have been watching for a while, so we have a name now. It's called Sunday Praise. You heard the theme song, I hope, and you're going to learn to shout or dance. Get your little groove on. It's a Amen. short time, but you got to jump right in and get that groove Amen. on. You know the advantage of us doing it this way. You can put that thing on pause or rewind it and play it as many times you want. Just don't steal our music, please. That's right. But, uh, but uh, we also want you to tune in on this same uh, either Facebook channel or either our YouTube page. And we want you to join us every Wednesday for living devotions. Yes, yes. And I'm telling you now, we're getting great oh, yes, word and report. compliments and reviews from both of our programs. So we thank God for living thank word. God. It's more casual setback if we're not being that already. But uh, and some of you have been following us since day one. You know, we've been doing this since March. But uh, we want you to open your Bibles and pull up that notepad and yes. really be blessed because the word from living devotions is not just a, a Bible study. No, it's, not. it's And the Lord gave you that as well as yes. Paul's and Brent. Yes. The Lord gave you a living devotions and, and it's getting that word in us so that we can live. So we can live. Off of Living that word. the word. That's why it's living devotions. Amen. Amen. So we're excited about that. You can join us, follow us, like us, share us. Every uh, on our social media pages, Holy Temple Church of the Fresh Harvest. Also on our other uh, social media page on uh, Facebook, which is Perfecting Life Center. So there's two Facebook pages, and that is Holy Temple Church of the Fresh Harvest and Perfecting Life Center. Then there is our uh, Perfecting Life Center YouTube channel, which is just simply Perfecting Place. But for Living Devotions, if you just type in Living Devotions, they will all come right up. They'll take you to the page, but all of the Living Devotion episodes will pop right yes, up. Yes. And uh, we just praise the Lord. So we're, we want you to do the same thing with Sunday Praise. And we just honor the Lord. 
we Pastor, really I think we've done a lot of talking, but I need to read a scripture before we go into our first selection. Uh, Psalm 91, and you left the Bible open at home uh, to hear. So we, we can believe it opens where we've been reading when you're not there with us. But in Psalm 91, just want to read a few verses from the New Living Translation. Verse 1 says, those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest yes. in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. Yes. He is my place of safety. He is my God and I trust him. Verse 3 says, for he will rescue you from every trap and protect you from deadly diseases. Did you hear that? That's verse 3. For he will rescue you from every trap and protect you from deadly disease. Verse 4. He will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises Hallelujah. are your armor and protection. Then I want to read verses 9, 10, and 11, and I'll read a few more. Verse 9 says, if you make the Lord your refuge, if you make the Most High your shelter, no evil will conquer you. Amen. No plague will, where am I at? No plague will come near your, your home. Verse 11, for he will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. Verses 14, 15, and 16. The Lord says, I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. When they call on me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. I will reward them with a long life and give them my, my salvation. salvation. May yeah. God add a blessing to He's the reading right. of his word. That's Psalm 91. Read it in any translation. But we just read it for you. It's a total of 16 verses. It sounds like we read 16 verses. But we omitted some just to keep the flow of the continuity. So we thank God that this word yes. be your word for yes. this week. And find your shelter, your strength, and your refuge from God's word. He's with you. Yes. And I think even our selections on today are going to bless you. Absolutely. To remind you that you don't have to worry. Yes. And you don't have to stress. God has you in the palm of his hands. God is in control. And he is keeping you. So why don't we go to a song, Pastor? Sounds good to Amen. Me. So remember this song. This song is, was written by Chanel Pope. My sister, and I'm so proud because she is an awesome writer. You know, we've been yes. bragging up. Somebody on this program been bragging about their music Amen. I know. just about every week, you know. But but all glory is to God. But I thank the Lord for my sister. Yes. She is the music, uh, the minister of music at the Holy Temple Church. Hallelujah. And she's a prolific writer Perfect. and awesome singer. People love her song. You name the occasion, she has a song for it. Amen. But here's a song. And when I announce it, I know folks are going to go off. Yes. But he will supply yes. your every need. Be blessed by this Hallelujah. selection. To brighten your skies, He'll supply your every need. When you're in need, He'll live to see. Dry those tears from your eyes. It's His good pleasure to brighten your skies. He's not too far away to see your dreary days. He knows the way you take when you so. 
search for answers Not so far away Your dreary days He knows the way you take When you search for answers There is an assurance He will take care of you And sure he will take care of you. He'll supply your every need. When you're in need, he'll intercede. Dry those tears from your eyes. right now. God will supply your need. He is the God of all supply. We know him as El Shaddai. He is the many breasts of one, the all sufficient God. He'll supply your need. You have to believe that God will take care of you. God has it in control. God knows what we need. He will supply you every need. God's going to intercept for you. God will. I know, I know, I know, I know he will. Whatever you need, whatever you need from the Lord, God will. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know he will. Come on at home, sing it with us. by that selection, God will take care of you. Hold on to that. Believe that. Treasure these songs and worship the Lord and let them minister to you. This is why we want you to share the program. It's not about the singing, but it's all about the lyrics and the music that the Lord has given. So let the Lord bless you. We thank you and appreciate you so much for tuning in each week and telling other people about it. We have received a praise report. We had someone to admit that uh, to accept the Lord Jesus Christ, and they shared that with us. And we don't have to know who you are. We just need to know that you are giving your life to Jesus. That's why we're here. 
We're not here as a fundraiser for ourselves. We didn't do this so you can give through any means of giving so that we can support ourselves. It's all about keeping the ministry going. And the more we can receive financially, the greater of a program we can present to you. So we want to remind you, if you want to give, we are two nations in one. We are one nation, excuse me. We are one nation in two locations. That is the Holy Temple Church of the Fresh Harvest and the Perfecting Life Center. And we, when we do this, when we, when we pause for the offering, we're speaking to our members as well as to those who are joining us as online members. And we got some more things coming down the line that we're going to share with you. But if you want to give to Pastor Audrey's church, the Holy Temple Church, I said it that way because I, I didn't want to say to Pastor Audrey because that's it's not going to her. I'm not saying to Bishop Courtney Pope, it's not coming to me, but it goes straight to our ministries and our financial integrity has always been intact. So we thank God that nothing about that has changed. But you can text and give to Holy Temple Church. All you have to do is pull out your cell phone and text HTC give HTC G I V E HTC give and you text it to the following number 206 859 9405 and just follow the instructions as you're prompted and everything is secure and your offering will be received and we will be grateful unto God for you so we honor the Lord for that Pastor Audrey is coming again with another awesome word for the week and I don't know about you I'm still shouting off of last week because I'm telling you now Pastor Audrey felt like preaching and she preached on last week program and the Lord has given her another word that we are excited about I said not be excited to hear it because when, when she's before the Lord she keeps me out so I, I when you hear it I, I'm listening to it for the first time myself but each time that the revelation and the points that that the Lord has given her just takes us to another realm of understanding so we are better because of the word of God and she is an anointed vessel of the Lord so with this pandemic and all that's going on this is not the hour this is not the day to argue whether God called women to preach whether God uses women listen right now we're all in the house together am I right and in the house together we are one we are family and I reiterate this again look at this whole pandemic in a spiritual sense some are looking at it as God's judgment. Some are looking at it as God's sin and plague. Some are looking at it as God's way of getting the world to so take God is crying out to the planet. I, I Listen, I believe all of that, all of that. But you need to look at something that does not imply judgment. You need to see that God is doing something with the church. He's taking the church back to the book of Acts. And that's where the power originates. That's where God comes down in the form of the Holy Spirit and empowers us to speak as he would speak, to see as he would see, and to do as he would do. So silver and gold we don't have, but such as we have, we give to the world. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ. So join us in this time. It's beyond a pandemic because one day I'm going to preach about a spiritual pandemic. God is was going to break out all over the planet and you need to be a part of it. So we honor the Lord for you and we thank God. We want you to be blessed as we labor before the Lord to present to you the word of God each week. Pastor Audrey is going to come and bring the word of God and after after this song she will bring the word of God after Pastor Audrey preaches we will be praying with you and we want to pray the prayer of salvation we want you to pray that prayer with us and let us know that you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ because when this is over we want to see your face in the place and be a part of this ministry if you enjoyed it through this presentation you ought to see us when we're all together and how we really get the job done. So at this time, we have another selection. Move that coffee table. I tell you every week, move that table. Tell them kids, come on. Somebody at home got a tambourine. Get that tambourine. We got a little church in here. Get ready. Come on. I'm getting in the beat right now. Get in that beat. Let's have some church because victory belongs to the people of God. Come on, put your hands together, everyone. Let's have some church this Sunday morning. Victory is mine. Victory. 
free is mine. Oh, today it's mine. And I told that devil, oh, because today is mine. Joy is mine. Oh, yes, it is. Joy today. Father, we thank you and we give you glory. For this is the day that you have made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for this moment. We thank you, God, for this opportunity to come before your people, those who know you, and those who are seeking to know you. God, we just give you glory. We ask that you would bless this word. Let it go forth with power, understanding, demonstration, and anointing. I say as Jesus said, the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. And we just give you praise on today. Amen. Amen. I am blessed and I am honored to be here to bring forth the word. If you would turn in your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 9, starting at verse 24. I'm going to read down to the 27th verse, and I'll be coming from the New Living Translation. I'll give you a moment just to get there. All right, we're going to begin to read verse 24. Don't you realize that in a race, everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize. So run to win. All athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize that will fade away, but we do it for an eternal prize. So I run with purpose in every step. I am not just shadow boxing. I discipline my body like an athlete training to do do what it should. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I myself might be disqualified. I don't know about you. This is in the message translation because it just breaks it down a little more. I don't know about you, but I'm running hard for the finish line. I'm giving it everything I've got. No sloppy living for me. I'm staying alert and in top condition. I'm not going to get caught napping, telling everyone else all about it, and then missing out myself. Praise God for his word on today. I'm excited. I'm excited to bring this word on today, and, and it seems like Bishop and I are just kind of following, following each other in the word. Um, I want you to turn to your neighbor, turn to somebody, tell them to come out the uh, bedroom, tell them to come downstairs, 
because I want you to just uh, say this topic with me. Amen. We're going to say, say it to each other. We're going to say, don't lose your momentum. Don't lose your momentum. Amen. I know that we are in this um, time, and I'm going to say this is a God time. I know we want to just label it crisis. We want to label it uncertain times. The only one that's uncertain about it is us because God is certain about what he is doing and what he is going to get out of this. No, he may not have initiated, but he's using it for his glory. And I just thank God because I'm getting so much out of this time. Yes, there's been some heartache. There's been some tears. There's some good people that we lost. But in all of that, we can yet rejoice. But God wants me to just share with you today, don't lose your momentum. What is momentum? In physics, the property or tendency of moving an object to continue moving. We're in this thing. We got to just keep moving. We, I don't know if we're still, if, if God is looking at it and saying, you're just still in the beginning, and I don't think we are. Um, I heard a prophetic word come forth and say that during the time of Passover, God will begin to turn this thing. And I believe it's happening. See, I don't listen to the mainstream um, news. I listen to God's voice. And I, I seek to hear what is, God, what is God saying out of all of this. If you keep listening to the mainstream news, just take, just take it from me. God told me a lot. He told me when this first started to stop listening and sitting up for hours listening to what they're saying. We need to listen for his voice. I listen for, I listen for about an hour, then I cut the TV off, and then I go somewhere and pray and get in my worship mode so that I can hear from God. Because see, when you keep listening, what does the enemy do? He wants to spark fear. He wants to spark panic. A lot of people are panicking. But let's hear the voice of God. And, and I found myself just now in a place of just rest and peace. And that's where we want to be in this because God ultimately has everything in control and God is in control and we just thank God for that. But since we're moving, we're moving. I didn't stop moving. I just had to move another way. When, when this thing started in this pandemic, we didn't stop moving as the church. We just had to learn to move another way. And I'm not mad at God because it's, it's stretching us. It's causing us to grow. It's really causing the body of Christ to mature in this hour. If he couldn't do it while you were in the pew, he's going to do it while you're in your house. So I just thank God because it's causing us to move in a different way. And we didn't stop moving. So don't lose your momentum. You were moving before this happened. We're keep, I'm going to keep moving while it's going on, and I'm certainly going to be uh, propelled, and we're going to keep moving when this is over. So don't lose your momentum. Momentum is a property or tendency of moving an object to continue moving. So in other words, don't lose your momentum. Momentum is if you have a momentum, if you're moving, just keep moving. Just show somebody and say, just keep moving, girl. Just keep moving, guy. Just keep moving. We're going to run. We're going to run through this thing. We're going to run this race that God has placed us in. We are in a race, and we're going to run this race with purpose. First Corinthians 9 and 26 says, so I run with purpose in every step. I am not just shadow boxing. I don't know about you, but there's purpose for this time. I am running this race, and this is just a part of our race. This is a part of the marathon of life that we're in. We're going to get through this. Just keep running just keep moving so i'm running with purpose in every step i may have some missteps you may have some missteps but we're going to keep running with purpose in every step I, I may say god i don't know what's going on right now but i'm going to keep moving and i'm going to keep up with the pace of god hallelujah so we're going to run with the purpose we are so we are put on this earth we are to leave this life empty we're not to leave this life full. So in this race, I'm, I'm Lord, I just, if I'm spilling out some things that you have placed in me, then that's what I'm supposed to do. At every destination, at every stop, wherever I go, God, just empty me out so that I can make room for you to fill me again. But so the people that I come in contact with, the people that I encounter can receive all that you have placed in, in me. We are to leave this life empty, empty of purpose, empty of our gifts, and empty of our call. I am not called if I am only preaching to myself. I don't have a gift if I'm only using it where I'm the only one can benefit from it. 
Hallelujah. I don't have a purpose if my purpose is, is not igniting other people. Who is your purpose igniting? Um, um, who is your, what is your gift awakening? It should be awakening a gift in other people. Who is your call calling to? Somebody should see what God is doing in you and say, God, I may not be there yet, but help me get there. There's someone above me that's pulling me up, that's, that's calling me to not be satisfied with mediocre. God, I want to get there. I want to run this race. And when I run this race, I want to continue to stay in motion. And I want to spill out what God has placed in me. I thank God for this platform of social media because we were uncomfortable before we were forced to do this. But I'm getting comfortable here. And I feel like I'm spilling out what God has placed in me. There is things that have been suppressed and depressed because there was no people or anyone to pour it on. But I thank God for the opportunity that now I can empty out what he has placed in me. Hallelujah. Put a praise right there. Hallelujah. So who is your purpose igniting a purpose in? Hallelujah. So who is your gift awakening someone else's gift? Is your gift awakening someone else's gift? And is your call calling to somebody else? We're still in that race. We're still in that race. Hallelujah. I want to take excerpt um, some portions of the same scripture, but I want to take it out of the message Bible, and I want you to listen. My set, um, actually, this is actually coming from Psalms 119. It was, it was a prayer that David, David really was going through in that uh, uh, Psalms 119. He was really going through, so he was really pouring out his heart to God. So um, you may read it in your translation, but it's not going to sound the same, but I want to read it um, in the message um, translation because it's saying and it's tying in with what God has given me. Um, Psalm, Psalms 119, I'm starting at verse 34, but I'm actually going to skip around. My sad life's uh, dilapidated, a falling down barn. This is David. Build me up again by your word. Barricade the road that goes nowhere. Grace me with your clear revelation. I choose the true road to somewhere. This is David, and we're talking about a race. Don't lose your momentum. I choose the true road to somewhere. I post your road signs at every curve and corner. I grasp and cling to whatever you tell me, God. Don't let me down. I'll run the course you lay out for me if you'll just show me how. God, we need God to show us how to run, how to run through this pandemic, because we're running through it. I'm not stopping. Don't you stop. I know we just hear about things that are happening around us and because of it, but let me tell you something. When God, God shared with me this week that, that the people that are leaving here that are in him, he's here to choose. He's picking his jewels. He is just choosing his jewels, and that is a scripture in the word. It's in the word. He is just choosing and selecting his jewels. And this does not take God by surprise. I don't care what they're labeling, why they are leaving here, but it's just God choosing what he, the people that he is wanting to take at this time. Amen? So you can take heart in that. They may say they left here, they passed by COVID-19, but God said, no, I'm taking them because they're mine. They're mine. So I want you to uh, be encouraged because of that. Uh, let's continue reading my ex excerpt from the message portion of 119. It says, God, teach me lessons for living so I can stay the course. That's important that we don't deviate from what we're doing in God. We just um, have to find a new way to do it. But keep doing what you're doing for God. Keep that same passion. You might have to turn around sometimes from the camera and wipe some tears, but keep that same passion. Stay on course. Don't deviate from what you're doing. It says, give me insight so I can do what you tell me. My whole life, one long obedient response. That's all I want. I want to obey God's voice. I want what I'm doing, this race that I'm on, this thing that we're just a uh, race, this life that we're running through, because we're just passing through. We're running this uh, race, this race that we're in. I just want whatever I do to be one long response of obedience to God. That's powerful right there. You'll get that tomorrow. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Guide me down the road of your commandments. I love traveling this freeway. 
That's powerful. Hallelujah. Guide me down the road of your commandments. His word is a road map. I used to hear um, some of the older saints back in the day say that, that his word is a road map. Road map. So God, lead me down the road of your commandments. I love traveling the freeway. Hallelujah. When you follow the path of God, you're free. You're not held to anything. You're free in God, and I thank God for that. We know that in running a race, sometimes we get distracted, but we got to manage our distractions. We get distractions. So I want you to tell your distractions and the distractors because they come in the form of people. It's not just objects. It's not just the things that we do, but sometimes the enemy will send distractors, and they come in the form of human beings. Tell your distractions and distractors, I'm keeping my pace and my place with God's intention. Hallelujah. You may come to try to distract me, but you know what? I'm anointed enough to move you out of the way and keep running. Hallelujah. I'm anointed enough to close my ears to the things that you might be trying to say to distract me. I am big enough and bad enough to kick the obstacles that the enemy might try to throw in my way and to keep moving, to keep running this race. I want you to know that in this time of this COVID-19, that in this time of this coronavirus, that God is shaking the shallow and he is sealing the solid. Good God Almighty. He's shaking those who can't be shaken. And I heard somebody say that, that everything that can be shaken during this time will be shaken. But he's solidifying. He's giving us solid ground. Those who are rooted and grounded in his word. We can't be shaken because we just don't have religion. We just don't know God through church, but we have relationship. So in this time, God is shaking the shallow. I heard someone say today that people are losing heart, that they're turning their back and they're giving up on God. Well, go ahead on because you were shallow. You really didn't have a relationship with God. So they're the ones that he is shaking. He's shaking you. He's shaking you because he wants to jolt you. He wants to shake you into a reality that don't just know me through church. Just don't know me through your mom or dad's relationship with me. But get to know who I am. Hallelujah. Put a praise right there. So I, I need to say that again. He's shaking the shallow. And he's sealing the solid. Those who are or have their foot planted. In God's word, who have a relationship with him, they are the ones that are standing. And if we were a little slow, we now are picking up the pace because I'm trying to keep pace with my God. i got to keep pace so I can hear what he's saying at any given moment. So we got to keep pace with God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So I'm keeping my pace. And I'm keeping my place with God's intention. You don't have to ever worry about me and, and someone taking my place. No, I'm not leaving anything on the table for my kids. They gotta hear the call of God for their life. They gotta say yes the way I said yes. They gotta come through. They gotta yield just the, the same way I did. I'm not taking up anybody else's mantle. This is what God put on me and I'm gonna do it to the best of my ability. Tell somebody, keep running. Don't lose your momentum. Hallelujah. I want to talk to you a little bit about a distance runner and what it requires to be a distance runner. First of all, it requires 100% physical readiness. And it requires 100% mental and emotional preparedness. You didn't hear me say 50 of this and 50 of that. No, 100% physical readiness, also 100% mental and emotional preparedness. It requires focus. What is focus? Eliminate and or limit your distractions. So in order to be a distance runner, you have to limit or eliminate your distractions. Focus on the task, not the toil or the trouble. So focus where you're trying to go. Don't worry about what's happening around you. There are some people that are falling around you. There are some things that are happening to try to distract you. Peter walked on water and he was doing it. 
He was defying the odds. He was defying nature by walking on water. But he began to sink from the distractions. Tell somebody, I'm not going to sink because of this distraction. COVID-19 is a distraction. Coronavirus is a distraction. But since the distraction is here, then God, get out of my life. Everything that you desire to do, I'm yielding during this time. I thank you for the time of rest. I thank you for the time that the world has slowed down, that they had to come to a stop. God, I thank you for the is my So as a distance runner, and we are in the, the, this thing called life, and we, it's a distance run. You're not going to get there by a sprint, but it's a long run. And I thank God, but we got to keep our focus. So we got to eliminate and or limit our distractions. Focus on the task, not the toil or the trouble. It is said that if a distance runner focuses too long, on the run, then it will become an obstacle, a hindrance to him. So even as a runner, we can't be in this race and just say, and just focus on how long it's gonna take us to get to the finish line. How long is it gonna take us to get out of this situation? Stop focusing on how long this is gonna be the way it is. Bishop talked about uh, the other week that it's a new normal and even when things go back or open up, it's still gonna be a new normal. And it's okay, because we need it to be shaken. We need it to see um, things in a different way and stop taking things for granted. It's a new normal and it's okay. It's okay, but we can't focus on how long is it gonna be before we come out of this. Focus on what am I gonna get since I'm in this, since I'm here, since this is where we're parked at for a minute, then God, let me get out of this situation. Everything I need to get out of this situation. And then some of us need to pray, God, get out of me. Everything you need to get out of me during this time. <laughs> Hallelujah. I know we don't want to admit that. But some of us are a trip, and I put us in there because, yeah, I don't care. You may see me with a mic in my hand, but guess what? I have my own private struggles. We all have our own issues and stuff we have to deal with and things that we think we're okay on. God is saying, I need to deal with that mess. Hallelujah. So, God, while we're here, let us get everything out of this situation. They may call it a crisis, but I call it Christ is. Christ is in this with us. Christ is going to bring us out of this. Christ is going to get the glory through this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we got to eliminate the distractions and we have to keep our focus. We have to remove obstacles. If we remove our mental obstacles and mental blocks, then we are able to handle the physical obstacles with less distress. That's powerful right there. That is powerful right there. It all starts up here. What do they say? It, the war starts in your mind. The struggle starts up here. When we can eliminate those obstacles and we can eliminate the distractions in our mind, then the physical won't see such a problem. We can endure. We will have the wind that we need. We will have the strength that we need not to lose our momentum. What is obstacles? So there are obstacles that are going to come along the way in life. It's just a part of life. That's just how it is. So you might as well just get used to the obstacles. But some obstacles, only God can move. Then other obstacles, you have to move. And then the last one, then there are obstacles designed to move you. Some of you would never move. Some of you would never change. If this didn't happen or come along, you would still be at a place called mediocrity. You would still just be doing just enough. You still would just be coming to church haphazardly, just coming last minute, just giving God whatever, giving everything else your everything, and giving God your last if this had not taken place. So yes, it is an obstacle. This is an obstacle that only God can move. 
But then there are some things in us while he's taking care of the big obstacle. There are some things that we have to move, that we have put in, in, in place, and that we have caused it to cause us to trip up. There are some things in us that we are the obstacle. Sometimes it's not everybody else. It's you. That's the problem. And there are some things that we have to move. But then there are things that happen that are designed to move us. This thing was designed to move us. This thing has come to shake us at the core. This thing has come to make us reevaluate the value of God in our life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. First Peter 4 and 4 says, Wherein they think it strange that you run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you. So there are people that you may have to lose. I'm not even talking about through death. There may be some people that since you're shut in, it's your opportunity. And listen, it's your opportunity to cut them off. It's your opportunity. God has given you a platform to get rid of those distractions. There are people that you have hang, that have been hanging with you or you've been hanging with them and you just can't seem to um, get the um, idea or, how, or, or a clue of how to let them go. Now that we're all shut in, it's a perfect time to say, you know what? I need to get rid of that obstacle. I need to get rid of that distraction. God has given you an out. Use it for your benefit. Cut off the people that don't need to be attached to you and that uh, you don't need to be attached to them. Some, everybody can't go where you are going. Everybody cannot do what you are called to do. Guess what? Whether they're friend, family, or foe, everybody cannot appreciate the hand of God on your life. They're a distraction. So now that you're shut in, shut them out. Get them out. Move them out. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So let's get rid of the distractions. I can't tell them. I can't run with you. I can't continue to go to the club with you and then show up in church on Sunday morning like I've been holy. Like I've been holy. You're only fooling yourself because you're not fooling um, God's people. So tell them, I got to cut you off. I got to get rid of you. I'm sorry. This is nothing against you. We're just traveling two different roads. You're in one race and I'm in another. And I can't lose my momentum. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm almost done. Thank you, Jesus. We must train in life to be disciplined. We don't want to hear that word. We don't want to be disciplined. I'm not talking about how mommy and daddy disciplined you. But there is a discipline that goes along with your salvation. If a runner has to train and has to get their mind in a certain place and has to discipline their thoughts and bring them into control so that their mind and their emotions are not all over the place. You can have it here and you can be physically trained, but if your emotions are out of whack, then you're out of whack. There are some people that are so emotional that they can't take another step forward. We got to get all of that in check. We got to get it all in check. So we got to be disciplined and to live a saved life, to live a godly life, you have to be disciplined, just like the runner. Hallelujah. God will use life. He'll use its pain. He'll use its problems. He'll use the situations and people to condition us. Hallelujah. Let me say that again. God will use life. He will use pain, problems, situations, and people to condition us. I'm better. I heard somebody say, I'm better because of it. I think my bishop may have said that. I'm better because of it. And I thank God. Everything up until this very moment that I have been through, some things I didn't think I could take another breath while I was in it. Some things I felt like it, it was trying to bury me six feet under. But I thank God that I'm better because of it. It has conditioned me. It has conditioned me. And he has, it has brought me to the kingdom for such a time as this. And everything has trained us for this hour. You got to look at everything you've been through. It has trained you for this moment. And I thank God that it has conditioned me so that God could look at me and say, I could use you during this. I could use you to be an example. If you have been touched by this and you are on the other side of your healing and you have already come through it, 
Look at you. You're alive. You're on the other side of it. God has kept you here for a reason. And he's conditioning you for what you must face in the future and those you must lead into God's destiny. Give God praise right there. Hallelujah. But it has conditioned us. Hallelujah. Sidebar, I just want to talk about Joseph. He's one of my favorite people in the Bible. Hallelujah. And how many, I know that you can probably look at some things you've been through in your life and say, you know what, just call me Joseph. Just call me because I felt like I've been some places that Joseph has been. But Joseph has been, was put in a pit. But Joseph was designed for that pit. I know that's a hard thing to swallow, but some things that you go through, God designed you to go through it. And then Joseph went through the whole process from the pit to the palace. It was his process. But he was refined by the process. There's some things through the process that Joseph went through that God got some things out of Joseph. And then he was able to get some things to Joseph. And then he was able to separate Joseph from certain people, but then put him before great people. So in the process, it refines you. But then wherever your place of destiny is, and for Joseph, it was the palace, and it was the palace that defined him. It was when he got to the palace, after the pit, after the process, and then the palace, it defined what his purpose in life was. And so go through your pit. You were designed for that pit. Go through your process because it's refining you. And then when you get to your place of destiny, you're gonna have definition of why you're there. Hallelujah, I'm almost done, I'm almost done. They say I'm getting long-winded, so I'm trying to hurry up. So as a distance runner, a distance runner will only look back for several reasons. They'll look back to see how far they have come. It is our own testimony that will fuel our steps. We can look back. I just took a look back about some things that I have come through. And because I'm in a race, I can look back at what God has brought me through and it fuels me to keep running even further. This is not going to stop me. I'm going to keep running through this. I've come through some things and it's only fueled me to let me know that with God's grace, I can come through this and you can also come through this. So if you're going to look back, don't look back and reflect and, and think about what you're missing. Don't look back for that reason. Look back and see how far God has brought you from and let it fuel you for your future and let it fuel you to keep running, to keep going ahead. Don't look back thinking you're missing anything. You are missing. You're missing hell, death, and destruction. But keep running forward. There's something great ahead of us. Hallelujah. A runner, a distance runner also, he, he evaluates his surroundings. Take a look at your surroundings. We're in a race. Look at who's around you. Look at what is around you. Is what, um, what is around me or who is around me, is it benefiting my life? Is it pushing me? Is it fueling me to go far, to keep running all the way? If it's not, then I need to cut some things off. Then it's an obstacle. It's an obstacle in my way. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And then the, the other reason that a distance runner will look back, because it fuels their momentum. They can look back and see how far they've come, knowing that the destination is not too much further ahead of them. And if it is, if I came this way and I made it halfway, it fuels them to know that they can make it the rest of the way. Hallelujah. Put a praise right there. Thank you, Jesus. It is the enemy's intention to knock you down permanently, to disable you and to interrupt your flow. The enemy wants you to lose your breath in the middle of the race. I know we're going through a crisis, but don't lose your breath. We're in this race. You're in the middle of a race. You don't. You have to recognize how far you have come. Don't allow the enemy who is breathing out threatenings, who's trying to intimidate you, to try to make you fear to go outside and to do things or be in the presence of people. Yes, we're going to use wisdom, but we are not going to walk in fear. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but power of love and of a sound mind.
mind. Don't allow the enemy through this crisis to cause you to lose your breath in the middle of the race. Yeah, you may get winded and you may develop shallow breathing, but all you got to do is stand still and just take a nice deep breath. Take a nice deep breath. Don't let him interrupt your oxygen cycle. Run with expectation. Run this race with expectation. Don't lose your momentum. Hallelujah. If you don't see what you, you are expecting, it's not because it doesn't exist. It's only because you have not reached the location of your expectation. This is why you got to keep running. This is why you can't lose your momentum. I'm not where I want to be. I'm not seeing the things I need to see yet. It's only because I have not got to the place of my expectation. It's not because it doesn't exist. What you desire from God is there. What he has for you is there. Keep running. Keep going. Just get to the place of your expectation. It'll manifest. It will materialize. Hallelujah. By faith, Hebrews 11 and 3 says, By faith we understand that the entire universe was formed at God's command, that, that what we now see did not come from anything that can be seen. Everything that's visible came from something but that was invisible. God spoke it into being before we actually saw it in our earth location. So just get to your place of destination. Get to your place of expectation. It is there. If you just get there, it's not here. It's not in the crisis, but it's there. But you got to get there. So don't get confused by the crisis. I want you to know that Christ is. Don't get conflicted by the crisis because Christ is. And don't get comfortable in the crisis because Christ is. God is in this thing with us. He's in this race with us. This is just a part of our race. This is just a part of the marathon that we are running called life. We're going to run past this. This is an obstacle. We're going to run past this obstacle. We're going to get past this. Stay in motion. Stay in process. And stay in progress. God bless you. Give God praise for his word. You can holler out right where you are. Thank you, Jesus. Don't lose your momentum. Praise God, Pastor. What a word again. I was just getting my notes together, just listening at what you kept pouring and pouring and pouring into us. We are better because of the word. So I hope that you were blessed on today. You said one of those things. You said some of the things we go through are designed to move us. Yes. Yes. And we have to make that move. We yes. have to make that move to where God wants us to be. Don't just wait for this to pass over. That's it. That's move. It. That's it. Get in position. I'm so glad the Lord uses you. Praise I'm God. honored. Praise I'm God. honored. To God be the glory. Amen. I'm I'm just honored. You're one of our covenant fellowship. <laughs> Assembly International Pastor. That's a shout out for those that are looking for coverage. <laughs> but we praise the Lord praise for you. Uh, and, and just stay tuned to our Facebook pages. We have some more uh, uh, ads being advertised uh, uh, almost on a weekly basis. So just stay connected with us. Stay connected. Stay you know, you connected. can tell I did radio because I keep saying stay tuned. Stay connected. It's a I'm trying to get it to the next century, with, but stay connected with us and God is going to bless. Listen, if you know that this word from Pastor Audrey was for you today, all, of, all that we've done today, the songs, the prayers, the praise, the word of God, it's not going to mean much unless somebody who's watching this say, Lord, come into my life. Absolutely. We had to do it one day. Yes, we did. Pastor, I love living this kind of I life. Love this I'm kind of glad life. that I accepted the Lord. We did it in our youth. It doesn't mean everything was perfect. Yes, and it doesn't mean that every day was sunshine. Yes, but I can tell you, God never left us. Yes. And that's why we can I be mean, in this age. And let me just say this because I can say um, that I did accept Jesus as a young person. But guess what? I messed up. And so have some of you. So I'm here to let you know if you messed up, you can get up yes. and you can come back to God. You can come back to God. Yes. I had to come back to God mm -hmm. after I got through messing up, mm -hmm. but I didn't want to stay there. Mm -hmm. I wasn't content just staying in my mess. Mm -hmm. So today is your opportunity yes. to come back to God. Yes.
God didn't, uh, um, he never forgot about you. Mm -hmm. He didn't just push you to the side. He's, he's drawing you on today. He yes. loves you enough yes. to call you back into his yes. will, to keep you here through all of this, to give you another opportunity yes. to come back to him because he loves you just that much. I messed up, you may have messed up, but because I came back and God accepted me with open arms and he did not um, uh, refuse me. He came. I came back and he accepted me and you can also come back to God. There's nothing that you have done that will stop God from loving you. And maybe some of you who are really churchy say that God is married to the backslider. He is, I'm a witness. I did, I fell back, I slid back, however you wanna say it, but I came back. Hallelujah. I came back and you can come back today as well. Amen. So you heard that. We're going to pray with you because we want you to be a part of the kingdom of God. Yes. It's all about that. Why don't you pray with us right now and just repeat after me. Jesus, Jesus, I come before you today. I come before you today. And I ask you, and I ask you for your forgiveness, for your forgiveness of, my sins. of my sins. Cleanse me. Cleanse with me. the washing of your word. The washing of your word. Make me more like you. Make me more like you. As my Lord. As my Lord. And as my Savior. As my Savior. I receive you today. I receive you into today. my life. Into my I life. I accept you, Lord Jesus. I accept you, Lord Jesus. I accept the work you did. I accept the work you did on the cross. On the cross. When you gave your when life, you gave your life to redeem me, to, to, to redeem me from my sins, from my sins, and because I believe that, and because I believe and that, and confess it with my mouth, I confess it with my I mouth. I am saved today. I am saved today. I renounce. I renounce any of my wrongdoing. Any of my wrongdoing. Any tricks the devil. Any tricks the devil will try to set in front of me. Try to set in front. I of am me. redeemed. I am redeemed. I am restored. I am restored. And I am renewed. And I am renewed. To a New life in Jesus new Christ. Life in, Jesus. in Jesus' name, I pray. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. You can shout and rejoice right there. God it's not Jesus. always a feeling. The work was already done over 2,000 years yes. ago when Jesus gave his life on the cross. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 says, If any man yes. be in Christ, he yes. is a new creature. All things are passed Pass away. away. And all things are become new. Yes, so little by little, let the Lord change your life. Yes. One issue at a time. Walk this walk with us. Yes. We want to hear from you. And uh, perhaps you can respond through the Facebook page and, 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 and we'll get in touch with you. And we're going to either uh, uh, reach out to us through Messenger. Yes, through or, Messenger. If you don't want everyone to see your response, right. then reach out through Messenger because I do have a Messenger. And so you can put your response in there. We just want to know that you have come to Christ. Yes. And it's not, like Bishop said, about a feeling. Uh, salvation is knowledge. It's right. about knowledge, right. knowing it's that I'm now changed, that Christ did the work for me, That's and right. now I'm accepting that work that he did mm -hmm. some 2,000 years ago on the cross. He died so that you can live. Yes. So all it is is just you saying, I'm ready to give my life to Hallelujah. you, Jesus. I'm ready to make a change. Yes, and Lord. I'm not going to do it without you because I tried it and I can't. Amen. But I'm ready to make this change yes. with you. Yes. And he will help you walk it out. Yes. We will help you we walk will, it we out. Will help you. It's a process. Amen. And you can do this. Yes. Amen. Amen. So say this with me. I am not what I am. I am not what I do. I am not what people say about me. I am restored, refreshed, and renewed by the perfecting power of Jesus Christ. God bless you. As you go with God, stay with God. He will stay with you. Blessings and peace be unto you. May God be This is
smiling. Please.